Hi, I'm Larson Halleck, and it's time for a fitness how-to. That nigh-impossible seeming exercise known as the human flag. The human flag is likely an exercise that you've seen in some pop culture creation, but you can scarcely believe is an exercise that people actually do. Considering that the vast majority of this exercise's pop culture appearances are in superhero comics, action movies, and other fantastical media forms, I wouldn't blame the average fitness enthusiast for assuming that this isn't an exercise people actually do. Indeed, I certainly thought when I was younger that this was a fake exercise that had somehow become a meme amongst the dyspeptic nerds that draw superhero comics. But, as you can probably imagine from this video, that's completely wrong. You can, in fact, do the human flag. Why do it, you might ask? The human flag is a great method of training the entire upper body, from the hips to the arms and shoulders and everything in between. It also gives some auxiliary work to the lower body and the muscles of the spine. Holding the body rigid against the force of gravity itself provides a tremendous workout for all muscles involved. In addition to its practicality, it just looks cool and impressive. I guarantee nobody else in your gym is doing the human flag in their workouts, and you'll get respect and admiration from both sexes. Why wouldn't you want that? Last, and arguably best of all, this exercise costs you literally nothing to do. As long as you have some sort of vertical pole you can wrap your hands around, you can do the human flag. You do have a vertical pole near you, don't you? If you don't, move somewhere civilized. There are two types of human flag. The clutch flag and the hang flag, arranged in order of increasing difficulty. The clutch flag, while by no means easy, is much easier than the hanging flag. We'll be learning the clutch flag today, <coughs> because I can't do the hanging flag yet. Before we actually start doing the clutch flag, we gotta learn how to do the clutch hang to set it up. To do this, approach the vertical pole and stand to its side. Extend your stronger arm straight out and sort of wrap it around and curl it back over the pole, tucking the pole into the armpit. Simultaneously grasp the pole with that hand, making sure to point your thumb downwards. Then with your other hand, grasp the pole around the uh, stomach or hip level, making sure to keep your thumb up. This arm, more specifically the elbow, acts as support in the exercise bolstering your body by jutting against the hip and making the clutch flag much easier than the hanging flag, in which only your arms and shoulder girdles are supporting the weight. With your arms in the proper position, shift your body weight forward until your feet leave the ground. Do not twist your body or otherwise try to make it horizontal. Just get off the ground and hold. This is the clutch hang. As usual, you only advance to the next step when you can hold it for 10 seconds. That's the case in any static hold. After that, you truly begin to incorporate the lower body. The tuck flag has you take the clutch position, then pull and tuck your knees as high as you can. Your body is probably diagonal to the ground at this point, and that's completely acceptable for now. Then we do the half tuck. Take the tuck position you did previously, and then extend one leg, typically the stronger leg, out and off the ground while keeping the other one tucked. If you can't do this, just extend the strong leg a couple of inches and then gradually build up to a full extension. Next, the fully extended diagonal flag. Start with a tuck flag and then extend both legs fully out and diagonal. Similarly to the other steps, if you can't do it at first, gradually extend. After this, you begin holding the body horizontally in all subsequent steps. The first step of this series is the horizontal tuck. Take the clutch hold and then twist and lift your body up and horizontal. Try to imagine bringing your hips up and in line with the strong arm. That helps me get into position. From here, the steps are largely what you would expect based on the steps of the diagonal tucks. The first step is to extend one leg and tuck the other leg, gradually extending by inches, of course, if you can't do it. Then extend both legs halfway if you need to. And finally, once you can hold the preliminary steps for 10 seconds, try to extend your legs fully. And yes, I did only take footage of the first step and the last step. Deal with it, fanboy. <laughs> anyway. I find that if you tuck your legs and then extend your legs out quickly and forcibly, it's easier than if you were to try to raise your legs up from a standing position or extend them slowly. And as usual, if you can't do it, extend gradually and slowly build up. So that's the human flag. Go forth into the world and drench panties with your physical prowess. And in some far off time when I master the other kind of flag, I will make a video on that. I'm Larson Hallett, keep on training.